Hey everybody, how's it going? How you doing out there? Hope you're all doing well and uh, feeling good about the world. So uh, this interview you're about to listen to is with Taylor Hawkins, drummer for the Foo Fighters, who also along the way has put together various side projects, um, as you probably know if you're a Foo's person. So this interview with Taylor was done on uh, April 5th, 2010, um, uh, for the release of the second uh, Taylor Hawkins and the uh, Coattail Writers uh, record, Red Light Fever. And if we look at the name of his band, Coattail Writers, um, I think it's a pretty kind of a tongue-in-cheek uh, <laughs> description of, uh, you know, how he saw those side projects. Um, you know, obviously the Foo Fighters is one of the biggest bands in the world. He's the drummer for the Foos, and now he goes off to do his own record, you know, write his own music. Um, I mean, he's not crazy. He's not stupid. He he understands, <laughs> you know, where his bread and butter is and, you know, where his reputation has been made. But he had some mu music in him, and he wanted to go out and do it. So, uh, yeah, so here you go. Um, very cool guy, very nice guy, unassuming. Um, I actually wanted to ask him more about, uh, you know, working with Dave Grohl and playing in the Foo Fighters, but, you know, the, the interview was ostensibly for his solo record and, you know, didn't want to piss him off about talking about, you know, his other day band, uh, uh, for the duration of the interview, but we do touch on it and uh, he's cool, uh, and uh, he made a good record, um. He's a big classic rack, rock guy, uh, rack, classic rack guy. Um, uh, Queen, loves Queen, uh, The Move, ELO. Um, so, uh, yeah, so uh, he brings some interesting things. So check it out, and I'm hoping you're digging it. And, uh, yeah, so everybody out there, peace. Taylor. Hey, Stephen, how are you, bud? I'm great, man. How are you? <clears throat> I'm good, Excuse bud. Me. Thank you so much for taking the time to do this, man. I really appreciate it. Oh, thank you for uh, wanting to interview me. Absolutely. Um, man, I, I, I love the record. I mean, I think that, you know, you and I maybe, well, I know that we kind of love that same kind of that, the move, ELO, Queen, the 70s stuff, Chin Chapman. I mean, I, I love all that stuff. Harmony, bass. Oh, dude. I mean, you know, um, there's so many things I want to ask you here, and, and let's try to get to this stuff. I mean, I, I, I love the quote uh, you know, that was in your initial press release. Uh, about halfway through, I just said, you know, F it. I don't care if the record ends up sounding like me having sex with my record collection. I'm just going to have fun with it. I mean, as you were putting these songs together, Taylor, I mean, could you, could you sense that, you know, all these bands and these things you love were just kind of right there on the surface? I mean, did, did you want to not wear your influences so much on your sleeve or you know i mean i, I think i think I, I didn't really have an idea of what it was going to be like at first and and really you know a lot of those influences come with the sort of the overdubbing of things like the, the initial tracks i mean there's a couple like way down and things that automatically scream sort of that that period of of, of music but but really started when i started doing all the vocals and stuff definitely I just started stacking and stacking, and then there was one point where I kind of said, okay, am I taking this too far? Is it gonna sound to this or to that? And then I just kind of said, I don't, I don't really care. You know, I, I have to make a record that, that, that I want to enjoy listening to. Definitely. That, that's that's, that's for, for me, not for anybody else in a, in a way. And I think that's kind of what you initially want to do is just kind of make a record for yourself. And, you know, and I, I I, I did kind of just say, screw it, halfway through. Okay, yeah, this is, you know, obviously people can hear my influences, but you know, I know I wasn't. I knew I wasn't reinventing the wheel, and I never set out to. I really just wanted to make a good, uh, fun record, and really, and you know, and write songs and and make a record that that was fun, you know. And I think it's. I think I, I think it's a fun record, you know. And if you don't take it too seriously as far as, you know, like, oh, well, you know, it's, this sounds like sweet or this sounds like me or whatever. And you can definitely hear Taylor's ripping this off or that off. Whatever, you know? No, absolutely. You know, you think of bands like, you know, 
wolf mother and you know you know him distilling sort of purple and sabbath and stuff and sure. you know i mean it's so uniquely you know what uh, andrew does and it's it's just so, like you say it's so unique to what you do i mean yeah i i hear these things but it's not like i'm saying oh he's ripping off the, the, the queen stuff you know and, and, and in fact what I found really really you know terrific about the record is, is like you say a, a lot of the influences you know um, were evident in the overdubs but you listen to you, you know you, you doing the, 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 the rhythm tracks yeah. and, and, and what comes through is this sense of you know you're sort of reaching back to kind of you know the grooves from the past and, and you know you're kind of you know tugging on those but, but everything is, is just so very new and modern sound in other words, these grooves that you're playing on some of these songs, you would never hear on some of those, you know, these songs from the past. Um, I, I guess uh, what, what I'm trying to say is, I mean, certainly drums have changed in, incredibly. I mean, the style of drums have changed incredibly since sort of, you know, back in the days of, you know, the 70s and 80s. I, I mean, what what is it that, that makes what you do sound so different than sort of what, uh, you know, Stuart? even what Stuart Copeland was doing or, or the Bonhams or the Bakers. I mean, what is it that you, you bring to the music that makes it sound so new and yet, well, there, yet there's still those sort of those classic influences? Well, you know, I mean, my, my, my day job, <laughs> the normal gig is the Foo Fighters, you know? Yeah. And, and that's, I'm sure that I'm sure that the style that I play with the, with the Foo Fighters is just my style of drumming now, you know, and it's what I am now and it's, I don't know. I don't know how you call. I don't know. I don't know if you call it, mo you know, what they say, modern rock or alternative or whatever that is. You know, whatever that means. Now, it doesn't mean anything to me. It's just, it, it's just. I, I just think maybe the energy of some of that kind of music, you know, comes through in the drum, in the drum tracks, you know, in the rhythm tracks of, of sort of. You know, it's a little faster and a little heavier. Yeah. And a little, I don't know. I don't know. It's hard. It's hard for me to analyze it really, as as far as it. I I, I think it. I I think that that's a fair assessment, though. You know, I I think that like it's sort of a new take in a way. Exactly. If pressed, if, if I listen to it with those ears, it's, it's almost like a new take on on some of the old styles that I loved so much, you know, it's kind of like, I wasn't trying to do it, I wasn't trying to, you know, bring the 70s into the 2000s necessarily or whatever, it just, it just sort of happens that way, mm -hmm. it's, just, it's just what happens when you let me loose in a recording studio, and basically that's what happened, is I was let loose in, a, in our in our beautiful 606 studios um, with, all, with everything at my fingertips, and, and I was able to do whatever I wanted, and you know that just happens. It just it just comes out that way. You know, and and, and a lot of it has to do as, as well with our guitar player Gannon. He's very influenced by Brian Mahan, Jeff Beck, and and John McLaughlin, and 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 all the same stuff that I love. You know, and he is he is, and him and Chris are a big part of that sound. So I don't know. You know, it just. It, it's just it's just an amalgamation of everything that I love now and then, you know? Up, up, up. All, all sort of stuck together on one sort of Thing. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, I mean, you talk about, um, you know, Gannon. I mean, were you looking for sort of those qualities in a guitar player? I mean, were you looking for someone who sort of, you know, understood those same kind of roots that, that, that you did? I mean, who... Mm, not necessarily. I mean, I, 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 I just think Gannon's a really great guitar player, and he's someone I really like to hang out with. And, and he just, we just sort of get each other that way and he just sort of gets gets it you know so I didn't a lot of the guitar solos I would he'd make me leave like I, he'd go alright I'm gonna leave I'm gonna do some guitar solos uh. and guitar over ups and I'd like you to leave and I would say okay that's fine so go and I'd come back and I'd come back and I'd say well sounds kind of like Jeff Beck sounds kind of like Ryan May but <laughs> sounds like you you know so and, and if you love it then I love it you know and there were very few times where I said, no, I don't like that. I want to do something different, you know? I mean, there were a few times where I, where I said, I, I, I hear something actually in my head that I would like you to try to do. But for the most part, it was definitely um, him just doing what he wanted to do. And, you know, we, we're the same age, you know? And we grew up listening to the same stuff, mm. you know? We really did. I mean, he, 
the thing is, it's funny because I was having a conversation with him the other day at rehearsal. And, you know, in the 90s, when I, when I was listening to Soundgarden and Nirvana and, and um, a lot of the stuff that was going on, and he was just completely immersed in, in fusion. Hmm. He missed the whole thing. So I'll talk to him about Jane's Addiction, Nothing Shocking, how it changed my life. And he'll say, well, I was... I was in, you know, Mob is New Orchestra, you know, world, you know, you know, I, I just wasn't paying attention. So, so I, now I play him those records. I mean, he's heard them, obviously, you know, he hasn't been living under a rock completely, but, you know, I don't know, it's just, everybody's own style, it's just, it's, it's, on, it's just on there, you know? Yeah, absolutely, yeah, that's, that's really interesting, man. Um, I mean, are you a different drummer in, um, in, in your band than you are in the Foo Fighters? I mean, are, are there kind of... Yeah, I mean, in, in a sense, I, I, I think I play... Well, the funny thing is, about three quarters of these tracks, drum tracks, were done with Dave. With, Dave was with me. You know, he, he was with me when I did the first couple of weeks of work on this record. So he was there when I laid the drum tracks for about three quarters of the record. And it's funny, because you can actually hear... I play a little bit different on the tracks he wasn't there for. And then the tracks that he wasn't there for were It's Over, which is the one that starts out kind of really crazy, sort of yeah. rush, sort of mob vision orchestra kind of thing. And uh, he wasn't there for uh, Not Bad Luck. And uh, I think there's another one. And, and, and you hear it. You hear a little bit of a different thing that I do. And I think that I just get a little bit more... I mean, you know, with Dave, when we're coming up with drums for the Foo Fighters, I think that he tends to think more in a songwritery sort of hooky way. Mm. And when I play drums by myself, I think I just tend to just be a little bit more self-serving drummer-wise, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, so I, yeah, I think that I play a little bit differently. There's no question, you know, that a little bit more of my other influences kind of come out than as far as like when I'm actually playing with the Foo Fighters. When I play with the Foo Fighters, it's more of like me sort of interpreting what Dave wants to hear. And then, you know, and he gives me, he gives me moments to do whatever I want to do, you know. There's definitely stuff that I do on the Foo Fighters music that he probably wouldn't do, you mm -hmm. know. And he, he just kind of puts it down as that's, that's sort of my sort of way of doing things, you know. And, and, you know, he basically gets what he wants out of me to serve the song, and then everything else is, is my own thing, you know? That's really interesting. Uh, I would say that there is a difference, though. Absolutely. I think I play it a little bit differently when Dave's not around. Wow, that's, that, that's, very, that's very cool, man. I mean, um, Taylor, I'm just going to... Yeah, that's not a bad thing, either. Oh, no, 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 no. I think that's an amazing thing, you know? It's, to... a, different, it's a different thing, you know? Oh, positively, positively. Uh, Taylor, I'm going I'm to you know, just toss out a couple songs here. Maybe you can kind of tell me a little bit what's going on and um, song-wise and drum-wise and groove-wise. I mean, uh, you, 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 you mentioned... Is this a drummer magazine? Is it a drum magazine? Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, actually for, a, like, a musician's site, okay. so, th so they're... Okay. Gonna understand right. yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, all this stuff. Um, not bad luck. Um, y you know, uh, you know, kind of this very cool lick. You know, um, uh, kind of starting it off. Um, I, I mean, can you just generally kind of talk about this song? I mean, I kind of hear kind of cheap trick stuff in there. I mean, a little bit. Not really, I guess uh, that song actually I kind of wrote with Elliot Easton. Oh, is that the song that Elliot's on? Yeah, Elliot's on that. The guitar solo is actually Elliot. Oh. And uh, and that's the one I. That's the one we kind of wrote that together. I had the basic the basic idea of the verses and the choruses and and then uh, yeah, I suppose there's a little bit of cheap trick in there. Not not not. Not consciously, but subconsciously, you know. Uh, uh, it's got the crazy sort of intro. Yeah. And the bass line that Chris came up with, uh, the, the opening bass line. Yeah, baby, I'm on the phone. I'm talking business right now, okay? Is that your uh, daughter? No, my little boy. Okay, but I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, so, interesting. Uh, so, yeah, that, that one kind of, we kind of worked on together and wrote that one together. Oh, cool. Um, So, uh... Taylor, I only had the downloads here, so I wasn't sure who was playing on these songs, which is why I didn't know that actually Elliot was on there. I mean, I know that, you know, Brian and, and Roger are on the record. I mean, what, what song? Roger, Roger sings background vocals on um, Your Shoes, which is the second song. Ah, uh, right. And you can hear it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The second you hear his voice, you know it's him. Uh, I 
I think. <laughs> oh, definitely, yeah. It was definitely not me. Uh, <laughs> and um, and then Brian played. Don't don't have to speak. Oh, definitely. Yeah, that's that's him doing that solo, right? You know, you know right away that's him. And he was also on Way Down. Uh, but mainly the thing he did on Way Down a lot was uh, the background vocal. Oh, really? Yeah. The, so like after the you know after the. Uh, on the last choruses, when it gets really big, the choruses get really big. That's yep. Brian made, you know, sort of vocal orchestrations. That's all him. It's probably like 25 tracks of vocal. Wow. Yeah. I mean, that must be pretty amazing for you, Taylor. I mean, I know that, you know, Queen, obviously, were a band that you listened to a lot, you know, when yeah. you were growing up and stuff. And First later... Concert. <laughs> Was it really? Yeah, absolutely. Wow. So, and then, and then later to ultimately, you know, meet these guys and have him play on your records and, you know, do cover songs and, you know, um, introduce them, uh, induct them into the um, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I mean, that must be pretty kind of dreams realized for you, yeah, I would think. Yeah, definitely part of my little mini rock and roll fantasy camp <laughs> going for myself. <laughs> it's great. I mean, absolutely. I mean, you know, I know things I never would have thought would have happened when I was, you know, 19 or 20, you know? That's pretty amazing. Just, just pretty amazing things, and those guys are gracious enough and cool enough to, to play on my record, you know? And you know, it, was, it was really a treat, and I'm really honored to have them on the record. Um... Never Enough, um, kind of the, the ballad, uh, there's some keyboards on there. Uh, yeah, that's me. That, you're, you're playing keyboards? Yeah, I'm playing keyboards. Acoustic guitars? I think that some of the acoustic guitars are me, and I think everything else is Gannon. Oh, really? So, so, so you do play guitars on the record as well? A little bit. A little. Very, very little, but, but there's, you know, a couple things here and there is me playing guitar, but for the most part, it's Gannon and uh, Dave. Dave did a lot of the rhythm guitars. He actually didn't play on that one, but, but he did a lot of the rhythm guitars. And, uh, yeah, it's just me and Gannon, and, and, uh, but mainly Gannon. And, and a lot of the rhythms are Dave. And, uh, yeah. Oh, 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 that's Dave's song. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, cool. Yeah. Oh, that's great. That's cool. I mean, um, do you like the idea of, of two guitar players in a band? I mean, is that kind of... You yeah, think even I, even though you listen to you know like Queen and Police and some of these bands have one guitar player, but I mean, do you like the idea of you know guys bringing in different styles and textures and kind of that marriage of those different kinds of things, you know, creating what you hear? Yeah, I think it just kind of works for this for what I for it just naturally kind of worked that way, you know. I mean, I would love it to be a trio sometimes because I love trios and I love I love that and I love the fact how you know Brian May is the only guitar player in Queen and Andy Summers. But it just what I was doing, I felt like I needed more than one guitar, especially for live. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I mean, there's tons of guitars on the record. So definitely need two guitars to really get all the sounds live. To really put it forth the way I want it. Gotcha. I mean, I mean you talk about trios. Tell her, I man, I know that Cream, I think, were maybe somebody you, you listened to. and Absolutely. You, guys, you sang, I, actually, I feel fine. I feel free. Sorry. I feel free. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I love, I love Rush, and I love, and, and you know, Queen were essentially a trio with a lead singer, you know? Yeah, definitely. Playing piano, so, so was Zeppelin, you know? And the, and the Who. And the Who, and all those bands, you know, they're essentially trios with singers. That's true, that's true. I mean, Taylor, would it have been going too far to, you know, think about bringing in some of these producers that work with some of these bands? I mean, having Roy Thomas Baker to come in, or, you know, the Chin Chapman guys, uh, I mean, would yeah, that Yeah, it would have been awesome. I, I you know, I, I, that would have been, uh, that, you know, if we did everything on a, on a, on a real, we treat it, we treat this band as, as what this band is. So we, I, it's, I'm not going to just, you know, yeah, baby, can I talk on the phone? Uh, I know, I know. Uh, I kind of treat this band as what it is. So everything's on a budget, you know, when we tour, it's in a van, we stay at Motel 6s, so <laughs> it wasn't really, you know, didn't have the kind of, had the kind of dough to, to hire a Roy Thomas Baker or a, or a Chin Chapman or someone like that. I don't even know if Chin and Chapman still make records. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but, uh, but, uh, no, I, I wouldn't mind doing something like that someday. I, I think it'd be really fun to do something with Roy Thomas Baker or, or you know, or, uh, you know, 
Jeff, the guy who did the ELO, Jeff. Uh, Jeff Lynn. Jeff Lynn. Yeah, he sounds like somebody like that. Maybe you've. I mean, obviously, I think you've obviously listened to his stuff, and I think there's a little bit of him in, in, in your vocal approach and stuff. I mean. Sure, I, lo- I love ELO, and I love the move. Great bands, definitely, definitely. Um, I wanted to ask you uh, real quickly, Taylor, uh, about playing on Slash's record. Or, I'm sorry, you, you sang on Slash's record. Yeah. Um, uh, were you actually there in the studio with Ozzy doing those harmonies? No. You weren't no. there. And that, and that that was that was really just kind of like uh, the, the thing is is, is um, we we had re- we had done the Foo Fighters had done a little bit of recording with. Um, with uh, Valentine, um, Eric, with Eric Valentine, yeah, and when we'd done this recording, this was a recording that never has been put out. Actually, it was a cover of a of a, um, a zombie song. This will be our year. Oh, and it's, it's pretty cool, but it, it hasn't come out yet. I'm sure it'll come out in some way, shape, or form someday. But when we were in there doing it, I did some of the background vocals. I like the way I did background vocals, and so I got a call from Eric when he was doing the Ozzy, uh, uh, sorry, Slash record, and he said, uh, do you want to come in and sing some background vocals? And, you know, I don't really get a lot of calls to do, to do that kind of stuff, you know? <laughs> I'm not really the guy that they could run to to, to to do anything outside of what I do with the Foo Fighters and my own thing. So mm-hmm. it's kind of like, if I get a chance to go do something a little bit different, I usually like to do it, you know? And, and I've met Slash a couple times. He's a real nice guy. He's a great guy, yeah. Good, good, solid, just music loving kind of guy. You know, he's not a, he's not really as much of a rock star as it appears he is. No, not at all. He's actually really a, a generally music loving type person, and, I, and those are the people I like when it comes to, you know, rock musicians that I meet. You know, people who really seem to be doing it because they love to play music. You know? uh, Absolutely, and it was you know funny because I mean you know Chris obviously plays drums on on Slash's record and stuff, and I play bass, yeah. Oh jeez, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. He plays bass, I'm so sorry. Um, you know, and obviously you know uh, Chris is someone you've been with you know for a long time. I mean, what is it about you know you and Chris? I mean, what is that thing you create as as, as a rhythm section that that is maybe you know different than playing with like Nate or something? Well, Nate's for the Foo Fighters, you know, that, that's what we, I don't think that we would do anything really necessarily outside of it, because we spend so much time doing stuff as, as the Foo Fighters, and he's got his own style completely. I see. Um, uh, Chris is just absolutely one of the best bass players on the planet. He is really good, he is, yeah. He's absolutely the most, just solidest, the, the, best. I mean, he did all the bass on this album basically in one day. Wow. Really, essentially. I mean, except for a couple songs, which we did later on, he did the front of the work for this album in one day. Literally an hour or two a song at, at most. And just unbl- and you can ask him to do anything, and he just does it at the drop of a hat, mm-hmm. no matter how difficult it seems. Or how bad. And there's some really, really great bass playing on this record. If you listen to the outro of Sunshine and it's just all over the record. He just does some really exciting stuff. Absolutely. Steven, we're going to need to wrap it up. Okay. Okay. Um, not that I, not, that's her. That's not me, Steven. Uh, I, I know. I know. Um, she's, she's the boss. <laughs> I hear you. Uh, just just, just a, like a one and a half more questions here real yeah, quickly. Sure. Um, um, you're, you're a Gretsch guy, Taylor? I am, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, which is, um, I mean, certainly lots of people play Gretsch, but I, I mean, weren't Not Gretsch... a lot of rock guys. Though. No, exactly. It was like the Charlie Watts, you know, the jazz guy, Stanton Moore. I mean, it's it's so curious that you would actually pick Gretsch. I mean, what is it about the drums that, you know, kind of works for you? Two things. I, I've, I've been using them in the studio almost always. So, you know, that was like a little, like, oh, well, obviously they're... Or, you know, the best. Yeah. To a certain degree. And then we did this. <laughs> we did this thing a long time ago, maybe like five years ago. We went out to Las Vegas to for this VH1 Rock Honors thing, and it's the one we did with Queen, mm. Paul Rodgers and Queen, and all that. And Dave had had a drum set rented for him because we were both playing drums with Rod on this song. Um, we will rock you, and we are the champions. I think it was. And Dave had a, rented a, a Gretsch kit, and 
I sat down on that kid and I played it. I was like, oh my God, these are unbelievable. Wow. So I just said, you know, hey, I use them in the studio. I, I, uh, I, uh, I just, I like them. And I played Tama for about 10 or five or six years, eight years at that point. I was ready to make a little bit of a change. I want to play all of them, you know? <laughs> I played them all. I played Ludwig, I played Tama, I played DW. Played them all, and they're all good. Once they get to the high end and stuff, they're all really good. Yeah, yeah. You know? But um, I just wanted to play Gretsch. And Phil Collins played Gretsch. Oh. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, cool. La last question, Taylor. I mean, I, I know that you're touring with um, Coattail Riders. You're actually going to be at the Troubadour here uh, in a couple of weeks, which I, I'd love to come by and see that. Yeah, I mean, I mean, uh, how does that feel? Uh, I mean, like you say, yeah, you're the Foo Fighters is kind of your your day job, but I mean, it's more than my day job. I mean, it's mother it's the mothership, you know. Of, of of course, I know you were being, uh, yeah, you know, you know, quaint about that. But I mean, it, it must feel, again, it must feel great though that you know to be in a position where you can go out and tour on your own and you know I mean let's be honest I mean there's more focus on you in, in, in this band and you know there's more pressure and I mean do you like all of that? I do I'm playing drums and singing the whole time it's unbelievably oh. pressure <laughs> do I like it? yeah I like it because I like to challenge myself you know I, and it's a challenge and it's a whole different kind of challenge and and I, I think that you know to grow as a musician you need to challenge yourself and and you know, just going into the studio every time with the Foo Fighters is a challenge. Mm. Because just trying to get the songs the way Dave wants to hear them and everything, it's a challenge. But this is a different kind of challenge. And and I really enjoy it, too. I really, really do. I mean, a lot of it, it's, it's not... I don't think it's going to make me a bigger star or anything like that. I don't think I'm going to make a million dollars doing this. I think that it's just something I... We... Me, Gannon, and Chris, and Nate, our, our other guitar player, yeah. who played on this record, yeah. and who's touring with us, Nate Wood. Yep. He's actually a ridiculous drummer. People don't necessarily know that, but he's <laughs> Tony Williams or something. Wow. He's a ridiculous musician, period. But um, it's something that we all do out of friendship and the love of the music and just the love of the hang, the music hang. Because it's just a hang, you know? Yeah. It really is. Those guys have guitars in their hands all day long when we're on the road. We, tr we learn a different cover almost every night. <laughs> and it's, it's, just, it's just some of my favorite people in the world to play with. I'm lucky because I have the Foo Fighters, which are my other favorite people in the world to play with. Dave, you know, like my brother, really, you know? He really is more of a brother than a friend, almost. Um... But, you know, I like having this, too. And it really just lets me go out and just kind of just, just do my own thing, you know, and, and, and get everything out of my system that I don't necessarily get out of my system with the Foo Fighters, you know? That's great. It just kind of keeps me at peace, musically speaking. So the same way that it does for Dave when he goes out and does all the other things he does. Yeah, know? yeah. That way we don't feel trapped inside one thing, but we know that we have that one thing it's more like a family than a band and it really is that's the Foo Fighters is more like a family you know that's great man you know so but it's just something that we get to that I get to do and really enjoy and it's passion and it's a passion for me you know and uh, I love it man I love it. I really hope you come by the Troubadour. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, positively. I would love to see that. Um, I, I really appreciate your time, Bye. Taylor. Bye. And, uh, you know, it's a great record. You're an amazing singer. And, uh, you know, you're an okay drummer. And No, I'm kidding. Man, it's, it's uh, you know, it's like Phil Collins' time. And, you know, it's just you, know, you can kind of one hand the number of singer-drummers. And um, it's great, man. It's a great record. And I, you obviously love it. And I think it's going to make other people love it as well. And um, go take care of your little boy there and uh, you have yourself a good day uh, you too man thanks so much Taylor thank you so much buddy bye bye